Have you ever stared at a memory card and felt like you were reading a book in another language? UHS-1, V30, 95 megabytes per second. Who made these rules? And more importantly, how are we supposed to make sense of them when all we want to do is store our photos without the card spontaneously combusting mid-shoot? Well, friends, not to worry because you're not alone and you're definitely in the right place. Welcome to Shoot Happens, where I break down the technical stuff so you can spend more time out there creating and less time Googling what exactly does class 10 actually mean? First off, friends, thank you for choosing to hang out with me. I know there's a lot of photography content out there and I'm absolutely honored that you clicked and played this video supporting the channel. Now, let's dig into the mysterious numbers and symbols on your memory card. And we're gonna start with the big one and that's going to be capacity. Now, you're going to usually see something like 32 GB or 64 GB or even 512 GB printed on the front of the card. Now this is simply how much data the card can hold. Kind of like how many socks you could fit into your dresser drawer. You know, more GB, gigabytes, more photos and video. Pretty easy, right? Now here's where things get a little spicy. You see that little number inside the C uh, or the U? Well, that is the speed class. A class 10 means your card can write at a minimum of 10 megabytes per second good for full HD video or burst photography. UHS-1 or UHS-2, well, that refers to ultra high speed bus interface. UHS-2 cards have an extra row of pins and faster transfer speeds, which is perfect if you're shooting 4K video or hate waiting for files to copy. Now, there are a few different types of memory cards. Now, the most common are SD cards, and then you have micro SD cards, and then you have CF Express, and then you have XQD, which I don't have one of those. But anyways, SD cards, these are the standard choice for most DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. They're affordable, they're widely compatible, and they come in a few different flavors like SDHC, so up to 32 gigabytes, and then you have SDXC, which is 64 gigs and up. And then you have micro SD cards. Now these are tiny versions often used in like action cameras, drones, or smartphones. Now they can work in regular SD card slots with a adapter, just plop it in there like that and you're off to the races, but they're not ideal for high-end photography. Now CF Express and XQD cards are often high speed. These are for high performance options for like pro level cameras. They're also great for super fast burst rates in 8K video, but they're also much more expensive and not all cameras support them. The key is friends, knowing what your camera supports and not buying a super fast car for your camera that can't even take advantage of it. Think of it like putting racing tires on a tricycle. Cool, yeah, useful, meh, not so much so. And then you have the V30, V60, or V90, and that's the video speed class. Now V30 means a sustained 30 megabytes write speed, which is crucial for recording high bitrate videos without hiccups. Think of that as like the card's stamina. So if you're filming your cat's birthday party in 4K, V30 or higher is going to be your friend. Now you might also see a speed like 95 megabytes per second written on the front. That's the read speed, not the write speed. So it tells you how quickly files can be transferred off your card into your computer. Now this is great if you're in a rush, but not to be confused with the write speed, which is what matters most when you're actually out there shooting. So yeah, memory cards, are basically tiny nerds with a lot of numbers. But once you know what to look for, picking the right one gets way less overwhelming. Your camera deserves a car that can keep up in your sanity. Well, that deserves one that doesn't fail mid-shoot. Now, this video helped clear up some of that technical card confusion. Friends, give it a big old fat thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you and I get to see each other more often. I've got more helpful content coming around the corner. And honestly, Subscribing when you think about it is way cheaper, way, way, way cheaper than accidentally going out there and buying the wrong memory card. Well, friends, that's gonna be it here for me here today. Thanks for watching Shoot Tapping and supporting the channel. If you're getting started in photography, I've got a whole lineup of beginner friendly videos waiting for you. No tech jargon, just real talk and practical tips. So go check them out. I'll put links down below and keep learning, keep shooting. And remember, sometimes, Shoot what happens.